This thing's probably gonna fall. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> up on smurf but there's no bad news just oil change this is the first oil change since i have put that engine in the car that's the new tunnel ram motor with the uh trick flow heads the roller cam new bearings it's all gooder only thing i wish i would have done is i wish i would have just put new piston rings in it but when i got that car the engine didn't have that many miles on actually it was rebuilt and the guy that owned it before me he hardly put any miles on it and then i probably put about twenty-five thousand miles on it and when we tore down smurf's original short block all the cross hatches were still in the cylinder walls and everything and i was already crap tons of money in building this engine and so piston rings i was like yeah the originals look okay or they're the ones that were in the car look good so we just reused them and so far i haven't really had, haven't really had any issues with it um it's all good but I wanted to, on the first oil change, real important, I wanted to inspect the filter. So I got my little oil filter cutter open dealer, which actually just cuts the top of the oil filter off. And I can pull the element out of it and I can spread the element. You can cut the element. You can cut it on both sides and spread it out like an accordion. But for the most part, you can see in the filter. So, and by spreading the uh, veins here, I can see that it is actually... In really good shape like it's a this is a fresh built engine new bearings so it's gonna have debris that the the crankshaft is gonna wear and the cam and the connecting rods are gonna wear into the bearings to seat it so that's all good um, it's not a flat tappet motor it's a roller motor so there's not gonna be any of the material from the lifters in there but all in all I saw like maybe six or seven tiny tiny little gold flakes of bearing material and i've spread open just about every element or every crevice so i'm gonna call the oil filter change the oil filter on smurf good news all right well time to pump it back full of oil use some of my freebie oil this oil is way too thin to actually put in the engine this is like zero ten weight but Actually, this is like zero, this is like 515 weight here, the Racing 41. But, oh, it's a 1020, I think. But by diluting it with some straight 50 weight, I am good to go. It'll probably be average of like 30 weight. I'm going to call it 30 weight. All right, so you guys have all seen oil changes before. You've all done oil changes. You don't really need to see any of that crap. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the oil change and then... I am going to do something to Smurf before I go to duct tape drags. Yeah. All right. First off, normally I would not start an episode at night. Actually, it's the sun is down. It's been down for a minute. So we're just getting the remaining of what ambient light I can get. But the reason I'm doing this is because I want to lower the ass end of, of Smurf. This is the ass end of patina. Look at the difference. <laughs> That's huge. And that car and that car both have the same part number leaf springs. They were both new leaf springs. So how did I get that one lower? Why is that one way up in the air? I'll show you in a minute. But first off, let me get some measurements, which actually we can see it right here. Look, 
this bumper is completely on top of this bumper and that is you know that thick I, I wonder what it is let's try this get more measurement here so at the very ass end of the car the deck lid we have 33 and a half over here we have 39 and a half <laughs> So it's six inch height at the ass end of the car. I did not know it was that drastic until I butted these cars up ass end to ass end. Wow. All right. Well, I will briefly tell you how I did that on patina. I raised the leaf springs in that car. I raised the front leaf spring mount to almost two and a half inches i think two and a quarter i can't remember exactly but it was over two inches raised the front leaf spring mount two inches and i raised the rear leaf spring mount not by modifying the chassis or anything but i switched the car over to leaf spring sliders that's probably too dark to even see that but leaf spring sliders instead of having a shackle that swings like a swing set leaf spring sliders is on a roller bearing and it's on a linear slot so it actually allows the leaf spring to flatten out linear wise which makes the spring rate of the leaf spring more accurate and it actually softens the leaf up because when you have a shackle that swings as it's going backwards it starts to resist the lengthening of the leaf spring so it actually adds spring rate uh, shackle bushing i mean two fingers squish squish so and when you have hundreds of pounds of force on a leaf spring pushing up against the body this isn't gonna do shit. Garbage. Actually, it's it's good for a bouncy ball. There you go. So now we're gonna put in some good manly shit and get rid of that Chinese garbage. USA. Um, I'm not gonna be putting leaf on or leaf spring sliders on this right now. I will later. I'm just wanting to lower the ass into this car at least an inch and a half. At least maybe two inches for now. Because that is redonkulous. I can see the top of the tread. That is stupid. And I know it's just getting darker and darker as I'm doing this, so I need to hurry up. So I got Smurf in the driveway. It's on jack stands. And what I'm going to be doing, I got uh, Troy here. He's my neighbor down the street. Sadly, he's a Ford guy, I know. But we'll, we'll let that slide. But you were, you, you've you messed with Mopars, right? Yeah, yeah. I got some pictures of some Mopars in my garage. Okay. So, so, uh, you at least had some buddies that were Mopar guys? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... Yeah. You'll slide. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we got some tools, we got some beer, and we got a car. So I'm going to be removing not the first leaf, but the second leaf. And then I'm going to be removing the rear clamps. And we're going to take the front leaf spring hanger and flip it. Because if you look at the front leaf spring hanger, the leaf spring sits lower on the bottom side of it. So if you flip it, that'll raise it up, which then raises the leaf spring up in the body and then by softening pulling that one leaf out that will so not only will the leaf spring mechanically be lifted up but then it will also be dynamically uh not lifted up but the car will sit lower dynamically because the leaf spring is a little bit softer which this car needed it because it rode like shit um, um i do want to put leaf spring sliders on it but not right now i'll do it later say so we're just going to blow through this because it's already dark I got to take off tomorrow to go to uh, duct tape drags. It's so, oh man, I already got a splinter. I didn't even start. All right, well, we're gonna start. I said, I do own a Plymouth. <laughs> well, I said we'll let you slide a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Give me a little bit of slap? <laughs> okay. Can you gotta put a couple pumps on that jack? Okay. Sure. This pin is spinning on me. 
There's one. Gave you about it. Yeah, more. Okay. More. One more. Why is it lifting? Okay. One more. One more. Whoa, oh, dude. Well, let's say, why is it lifting? Where do you want these clamps at? Put away somewhere? I just uh, throw them on top of the car for now. On top of the car? Yeah. Fuck Everything just go on top of the car. Here, you know, it's got real expensive paint job on it. Yeah, he likes them in moderation. That's right, because I gotta get away once in a while. I gotta get away. There you go, that's better. So, I'm gonna. Yeah, I was gonna. I'm just getting rid of that one. Alright. And keeping this one. That'll soften. That's a weight mod too, that's a horsepower. Yeah. Alright. Just gotta pull this last bolt off on the leaf spring hanger and then I can and if you can help me pull the leaf spring back. And then we can drop it down. And then we can just undo the leaf spring from the hanger. probably gonna fall. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> Never mind. Alright. So now we're gonna take it. That guy. Let me spray some lube on it. Is the impact over here? Yeah. Is there a, a 15 16 socket and wrench on top of the car up there? Little cheater way to lower your car. I might have had these off in here. I might have had this off here at one point because it's all leap, it's all and I snotted up. Well, I actually, no, the guy I bought the car from, he probably did that. So if we're upside down. slide her back in and then you don't want to tighten it until the car is back on the ground at right height otherwise that'll stress the bushing because if you tighten it right now and then when you lower it down it'll twist the bushing so oh, that's yeah. good to know. so if you nice and gross. all right so that's the simple lowering hack to lower the ass in the car that'll lower it about an inch and a quarter if i remember right um but it won't really lower an inch and a quarter because you're only lowering one side but since the pin on a mopar is farther forward so that inch and a quarter will probably equal out to like maybe mm, three quarters of an inch actual lowering on it because since this pin is farther forward it, you're, you're getting more of the full inch and a quarter effect. If it was right in the middle, it would be only five eighths of an inch lowering. All right. Um, can you? I think I. Can you make? Can you lube up the bolts or the U bolts on the other side? You already then, sprayed uh, them. Oh, you already already did. You already did. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just so just zap those off. Actually, you know what? Never mind. We just need to do one side at a time. Yeah. Let's put this one back. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So yeah, we are just trying to rush through this because I don't want to be out here all night. Um, so the bolt pattern on these top to bottom is different. So the top is narrower, the bottom is wider. Since I flipped it, now I have to oblong these holes so that way it'll accommodate for me flipping it. And then we can just bolt her back in. And then I'll put my, I'm putting a two degree leaf spring shim on there, not to lower it, 
but only because when I'm lifting the front of this leaf spring, that's taking pinion angle out of the different out of the rear end. So by putting a two degree shim in it, that's gonna probably give me back to where I was before. I don't know where I was before. I should have measured it, but it'll bring it at least better. At least it'll take it from being negative back to at least maybe neutral or a couple of degrees down. I, with leaf springs, you want at least like four or five degrees downhill to get that good uh, forward drive. Um, I have no idea where it's at. I didn't check it. I should have. I can always fix it later if it's wrong, but the car did shit and get pretty good before and it didn't have any driveline variation. So I'm going to say it was in the ballpark and I'm just going to, and by leaving that, lifting that front leaf spring, it's probably taken two degrees out of it. So I have a two degree shim to put it back in it. Enough said. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and oblong those holes. It's not a lot either. Right? We need up more bombs. Right here, we get we get a bolt on the top. All right, that's good. Good? Yeah. Good. I ordered me some slicks. Mm -hmm. They didn't show up in time. All right, hit it. What'd you have in the trunk? Definitely softer. Oh, dude. But it didn't really, feel, it didn't, doesn't look like it lowered very much. Well, actually, no, it's hard to tell because this driveway doesn't sit level. It's leaning, ain't it? Yeah, once I get it on flat ground. I think it lowered it down. Yeah, so, yeah, what I'm saying is this driveway is tilted, so it actually should sit lower than that. It's just because the driveway is tilted. Well, so we're going to get it on level ground yeah. and then check it out, but, oh, yeah, this side sits lower. But uh, we'll get a better day view in the morning, so. I'll show you guys then. And in the meantime, we're going to back it up and check it out because camera wise, you won't be able to see shit. So I'll check back with you guys in the morning and show you the difference of removing a leaf and flipping the hanger. All right. I'll see you then. All right. So it's the next day. I can finally show you the results in the daylight. And I love it. Smurf looks so much better. It was sitting way too hard.
his second pass. Good stuff, Chris. Spawn, so this yeah. thing is gonna be like. Oh, yeah, if this thing had 391s and slicks, this would be an easy 11 second car. Oh my god. And that was driving it here. Yeah, <laughs> street trim. Oh, yeah. Two, 293s and 275 Coopers. Yeah, <laughs> that's insanity. Yeah. Such a badass car. Chris and I are gonna line up. We're waiting on Smurf to cool down. You think you're gonna beat me? Well, yeah, because I'm so hot. I need to. Yeah, okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so the cars are actually pretty even, so I think I'm gonna hole shot him, but he's gonna freight train me on the top end, so. A little bit. Maybe. I got like 10 mile an hour on you. I'm gonna be really disappointed if you do, <laughs> but also don't go easy, so. <laughs> All right, we're lining up. <laughs> Smurf has been an awesome car. I just want to end this video on letting everybody know how great this car has been and how well this tunnel ram works on the street. I mean, 14 miles a gallon with no lockup converter and an automatic. I mean, and this is roughly 600 horsepower. It might be just a little under, um, or it might be right at. I don't know. I haven't dynoed it. But I've had zero issues with any of this, and I have put since... Now all that was filmed and since this car has been done, I have put thousands of miles on this car. Driven to LA, Tucson, Arizona. I mean, I've been on, and this car is a daily driver. It fires up every morning. It runs just fine. It, I, it, there's no stumbling, there's no hesitation. It drives real smooth. Everything about this tunnel ram is phenomenal. It, I mean, so Smurf has the automatic with a stall converter. Let me show you something that Smurf is going to get. Do, 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 do. Aha. In that box right there, that is in fact a Passion 
five speed billet 700 horsepower or 700 torque transmission that is going to go into smurf i've already got let's see where is it at i've already got the twin disc mcleod clutch for it i've already got the hydraulic throw out bearing um the only thing i need to buy for it is a is a, a bell housing um i've already got the shifter and we're going to throw a dana inside smurf too so smurf is going to get upgraded but for right now i've got one other thing i want to do with the automatic in that car and that is we're going to take it to the track on an open track day and because here in vegas the da is much better and you know i'm going to put slicks actually right here i've got some slicks for this thing brand new what are these 10 inch slicks uh 27 yeah 27 10 5 slicks so we're going to take it to the track with the 293s that are in it put the slicks under it see what it runs and then that same night we're going to yank that 293 out and throw a 391 in it and see what it runs just as a comparison between a full one point ratio gear difference between 293s and 391s same night see how much of a difference that makes on that car because those 293s that's really lugging the car down a lot so but it still ran a 1273 at 5,000 foot with those tires with the slicks that are right here i would bet that smurf will run here in vegas an 11.9 with those 11.9 11.8 with those slicks with a 293 gear what will it run with 391s i'm really curious to find out so that's the next plan for smurf and then once that's done i'm yanking out that slugomatic and going five speed more gears more betters and a man pedal i like the man pedals all right guys i just wanted to top this video off letting you know how good smurf is things i have planned for it i, I love that car that's like I mean, Patina, Patina's undergoing a little bit of goodies right now, too. So, but Smurf, I mean, is a phenomenal car. Power windows. It's, it's a great driver. I do want to paint it because that car originally was a very pretty car. B5 blue with a white top, blue interior, and a white RT stripe. That was a very good looking car. And it'll be even better looking with a narrowed axle, deep dish Kragers and the scoop so thanks for watching guys for getting you updated on what's going on with smurf and i will holler at you again later see you guys